Now starting with the fourth problem on cycloid, it is not a usual problem, something is different, we will see how to solve it. A circle of 60 mm diameter rolls on a straight line without slipping. Draw the locus of point P for a complete revolution of the circle. The point P is 38 mm above the straight line and towards the right of the vertical center line of the circle. This problem was asked in May 15 for 6 marks. What is different compared to the usual problem is position of point P. In the previous problems which you saw, uh, the position of point P is either a bottommost or topmost point. That means if we divide the circle with vertical and horizontal diameter, then that point P was lying on the exact division. But here, something is different. So we will see how to solve for such problem. Then starting with the solution. First, I will draw a horizontal line which will be the directing line on which that circle is going to roll. Okay. Then, first you have to start with the initial position of the circle. So, suppose if I am marking the diameter which is 60 mm exactly perpendic uh, perpendicular to the directing line okay. so I have to mark the diameter which is 60 okay. and the center point will be at 30 so, I am drawing the initial position of the circle extreme on the extreme left hand side because we are assuming that circle is going to roll on right hand side. So, with the center and 30 mm as the radius, we are drawing the initial position of the circle. Okay. Then, it is given that uh, circle is rolling for one complete revolution. So again here, the length of the directing line will be distance pi d. So here, pi into 60, which is giving me 188.4 mm. So we can approximately take it as 188 mm. So I will mark that distance from this tangent point to give me the length of the directing line which is approximately 188 so 185, 86, 87 and 88 here okay so I can mark the final position of the circle also so again I can draw the vertical diameter and draw the final position of the circle here For center line, I can just transfer the center of the initial position by drawing a parallel line to the directing line. Okay. So now, this will be the center for the final position after one complete revolution. So if I am denoting the circle uh, center C here, then it will be the final position C dash and we can mark the position of a circle after one complete revolution here okay. line is exactly tangent okay now after marking the final position of the circle, we will first mark the position of point P which is given as 38 mm above the straight line and towards the right side, right of vertical center line. Means this is the vertical center line and 38 mm above means 38 mm above this line. So 
we have already marked parallel line at a distance 30 which is the radius so above that I need to mark 8 mm so from the center I will further mark 8 mm so from the straight line I am marking total 38 mm now I will draw the parallel line passing through that 38 mm distance to the straight line so if I draw the parallel line passing through 38 mm I am getting two points on the circle that line is cutting the circle into two points obviously when this point is on the left hand side of the vertical center line and this point is on the right hand side we need to select the point which is on right hand side so this is my location of point P now obviously if I follow the same method for the previous problems in which we have divided using vertical diameter then horizontal diameter and then again marking more divisions in between that point P is not going to exactly lie on those one of the divisions so here we need to follow some different method so here what we will do is we will not take this vertical or horizontal diameter as a reference for dividing that circle so here we will first draw a diameter passing through P so we are assuring that that point P will lie on the exact division because we are initially including that point P as one of the diameters so now for dividing the circle we will take this diameter as a reference ok so this diameter we are going to mark the divisions again here the circle is small so we can still divide the circle into 8 parts instead of 12 parts so with this diameter I will mark angles of 45 mm to divide the circle into 8 parts so 45 then 90 then 135 somewhere here and again 180 so after marking those angles I will produce those division to divide the circle passing through the center on the other half also so it will automatically divide the circle on other half also so with this division I am getting this diameter then this and the center joining the center getting this division okay. now here we we'll start marking the divisions obviously we know that after rolling the circle on the right hand side P is going to come down first then it will move up so I will start numbering the divisions in this order so after P I will start first division then 2 here see the 2 is not exactly the bottommost division it is somewhere above that bottommost straight line then third division will be here don't include this vertical diameter as a division because we are not dividing with respect to the vertical diameter so this is not one of the divisions so 1 2 3 then 4 then 5 again this is not the division this is the line drawn for marking point P so 5th then 6th again ignore this vertical division the exact vertical diameter so it is not giving me any division so then 7 and obviously it will coincide with P now the next procedure is to mark the centers since we have divided the circle into 8 parts I should get the 8 positions of new centers that is C1, C2, C3 as done in the previous case so here we will follow the same acute angle method for that so with this point I will draw a random acute angle then we can divide this line into 8 parts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 then we will join the last division 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 with the 
last end point that end point of the directing line okay and we'll continue drawing the parallel lines no need to draw all the parallel lines you can just mark the first parallel line and taking that division you can mark the remaining division so here we have got distance for one division so i'll use the same distance to mark the remaining divisions because we are dividing into eight equal parts second third fourth Sixth, seventh, and we will again coincide with the original point P. Some error is accepted. Okay, so we have marked this new positions, divided this direct line into eight parts. Now, for marking the new position, we need to transfer these divisions up to the center lines by drawing perpendicular lines. So, from first division. I'll get the first new position of the center C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. The final position is already marked as C dash. So I'll start with C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. C six and C seven, and last is C dash. Now, when the circle is rolling down, I need to first mark with C one as a center. The new position will be P one, and obviously I need to cut the arc from a, on a horizontal line passing through one. So first I need to draw the horizontal line passing through each and every division. So I'll draw the horizontal lines passing through one, two, three, four, up to seven. Be careful while drawing those parallel lines. So from one, then two, then three, again four, five. Six, then seven. Okay. We'll also draw the topmost tangent point, which is between six and seven, for verifying our answer. Then we have to remember that the point P will touch the ground between second and third division. That means after marking P two corresponding to center C two, P two. To P3, P3 will come up, but between P2 and P3, that point P will touch the ground. Similarly, between six and seven, it will touch the topmost tangent. Okay, so we'll follow the usual method now. So for marking new position for C, which is uh, the initial position C of the center, the initial point is P. Now to mark the new position of P with C1 as the center, I need to first mark the R. On first division, horizontal line passing through one, this will give me P one. Then, with C two, I'll get new position of P, which is P two, which will be P two, and it is on a line passing through two. Be careful while selecting the line because there are two three lines, so don't get confused. So from C two, I'll mark on a line passing through two, which is P two here. Okay. Then with C3, taking the same radius. Now you need to be careful here because see here with C3, again mark two divisions on the line passing through three. So first is here and second is here. But as I told you, when uh, the nature of curve will be, it will start with P, then Passing through P1 and P2, which is marked here. Okay, between two and three, that point is going to touch the ground. Okay, 
then after touching the ground while coming up it will go like this and not suddenly like this so my exact division that p3 will be here okay sometimes due to some errors you may get p3 on the left hand side of p2 so that will that will be because of some error into uh, while drawing the parallel lines so your p3 should be on the right hand side but by some minute distance okay so we have marked p3 then again uh, continuing to the next center again c4 now with c4 i need to mark the r on line passing through 4 so it will come up again so this will give me p4 continuing this way as done in the previous problems so with c5 i need to again move up so it will be p5 then c6 line passing through 6 be careful again here c6 means this now between 6 and 7 that point will touch the tangent topmost tangent and then it will come down so with 7 again there will be two arcs here and here but the point that the nature of curve will be like this so i need to select this arc on the seventh division so this will give me p sorry first we need to mark c6 so which is already marked by mistake i have given the notation as p5 it should be p6 then this is p7 and again with the last c dash we will again for that i need to mark the straight line passing through p and where it will cut the circle that should be the final position of p after one revolution so here obviously i'll check with center c dash it should give me the center equal to radius so i am getting p dash and as we know that point p should come at the same height after one revolution that is satisfied you so now we'll join these points to draw the cycloid by smooth curve initially you can draw light line by light curve so p3 then p4 then p5 then p6 to get more smooth curve you can divide the circle into 12 parts also but that will be more complicated because more points and more lines will be there so we have gone for eight divisions so now see here between p6 and p7 it is going to touch the topmost so i'll draw the curve such that it will be tangent at some point and then it will come down and pass through p7 then after p7 it is going to end at p dash so now i'll make the curve dark first p1 p2 then touch the ground and again come up p3 p4 if your free hand drawing is not good then you can go for french curve okay so this is your required curve you can name it as cycloid again <coughs> you have to show the dimensions this completes your solution but still you need to sh show some dimensions like the diameter so for diameter you can show like this it is given as 60 mm so the usual notation for diameter is 5 to 60 then you can also show this pi d distance between these two points so 
and can also show pi d equal to 188 mm that is approximate okay so this completes the solution for this particular problem it is not similar to the usual method so remember here when the point is not lying on the exact divisions which was done using horizontal and vertical lines in that case you have to first start with the diameter passing through that point then you have to divide the circle with respect to that diameter okay so you need to follow this different method if the problems comes like this okay this completes the solution for this particular problem